While Angela may not have been a crowd pleaser or a big money spinner, it is a most worthy addition to Luc Besson's filmography as a director. I found it entertaining, funny, absorbing, touching, thought-provoking and, above all, interesting. It is also an abnormally intimate film. The focus is firmly on the two main characters. While the other characters may be in turn amusing, intimidating and even to some extent memorable, they are merely there to shed light upon the main characters or to advance the storyline. I wondered if a six-year absence from the director's chair meant that Luc Besson had said all he had to say on the themes treated in Le Dernier Combat, Subway, The Big Blue, Nikita and Leon. But I was reassured to find that he once again delivered an interesting take on the themes of personal growth, love, morality, society and even existentialism. There is, however, an essential difference. In these previous films, the main characters were outsiders or loners who challenged society's rules and who struggled to find a place in that society while remaining true to their natures. In Angela, André has succumbed to social pressure and has tried to fit in, only to find himself in trouble. He is an insider trying or needing to get out, but he has not been true to his honest nature and he has become involved in amoral business dealings, doing deals with shady characters in order to survive. He has tried to fit in and has lied in order to please, and as a result he has lost any sense of worth, in his own eyes as well as in others. Angela arrives when he is at his lowest ebb, when considering suicide, and sets about helping André both directly and by helping him to recover his self-respect. André does not seek to impose his will on society nor attack it. He is encouraged by Angela to seek freedom from the imposition of others' wills and not to be controlled. This freedom is to be gained through self-respect and the rejection of others' views of him. André is persuaded by Angela's belief in him, not by the fact that she is an angel. Indeed, the implications of her status, such as morality, soul and afterlife, are largely ignored. At the end of the film, the situation is rather turned on its head, as André asks Angela to gain her freedom from God. He invites her to leave God out of it, and to make her own decisions and follow her own feelings. As in previous films, God and religion are set aside in favour of following one's heart and nature. Both André and Angela need saving and redirection, he from the emptiness of lying and scheming, and she from the emptiness of having no attachments or any sense of real value. Once again, love leads to freedom and self-respect, and in this case, freedom from being owned or intimidated by others. They end up belonging to themselves and one another. It might even be suggested that in the end, André acts as an angel, Thus, the A after Angel in the title could also stand for André. Of course, on the way to this end, there is a process of self-discovery with life lessons galore, the whole being told with an interesting mixture of humour and purpose. Wherever he turns for help, be it the American Embassy or a police station, André is faced with red tape and lack of warmth and caring. He is invited to keep things in proportion and to keep an eye on the bigger picture, rather than become over-anxious about relatively minor problems. He is reminded of the values he held, but which he lost sight of in his desire to succeed in society, and he is reminded that success in an amoral and self-centred society is perhaps success without value. Angela wants Henri to cease living in fear, to see beyond the projected self-image of others, and to recognise equality among men. We all role-play in society, we all play parts in others' lives, but Henri has allowed himself to be governed by others' perceptions, and has compromised to such an extent that he has virtually caved in and given up on himself. Angela helps him gain self-respect and recognise weaknesses as well as strengths in others. Thus, he no longer feels inferior. In the end, he has been freed from fear and the need to accommodate others. He has learned to recognise his own value and break from his former vision of society and his place in it. An entertaining and intriguing mixture of traditional angel tale and Besson's common theme of the nature of society and the place of the individual within it, this film is set against a stunning black-and-white backdrop of Paris, and the story is told with his usual energy and humour. Luc Besson's direction is totally assured. He knows what he's doing and where he's going with this story. He addresses serious issues but uses a very light touch to deal with them. Thus the whole is playful and entertaining, yet thought-provoking and interesting. My thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it of some value.